we did is we built a, a, a pretty much large scale 3D concrete printer in our laboratory, um, which allows us to study this pretty much yeah, new technique on a, on a very large but still very accurate scale. Um, because the way we see it, that it, it does offer a lot of potential for the built environment and the building industry, but the technique is still pretty much unknown. There is little research available. And if we want to apply it on a very, uh, very high level of accuracy and efficiency in the built environment, we need quite some fundamental research on that. And we applied a very nice uh, control system to this machine from the, from the CNC world. Um, and we linked this machine to a traditional concrete mixer and pump. Um, and by doing this, we can actually control uh, the frequency, so the speed of the pump, so the, 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 the speed of the concrete flowing, but also the speed of the robot and link those to each other, so, which is very convenient for us because then we can vary while printing um, what comes out of the nozzle. The typical thing about concrete is that it's, it's very fluid at first and then at some point it starts to become hard and then at some point it is actually fully hardened. And this, this process takes time and, and varies based on the environment it is in. So that actually means that the way you print it and where you print it influences when it has a certain strength. And we need to, to really understand this behavior to be able to print all kinds of things. So one of the drives is, is, is mapping this material behavior in relation to how you print it. Right now what we are more focused on is what the printer can do with the printing process. It wouldn't make sense that we study for one year that we need to achieve this particular geometry or we need to use this particular material and at this, after one year we realize that that particular geometry is not printable or no. that particular material cannot be used for printing. We are already looking into um, uh, uh, changing nozzle sizes, so we already uh, went from this 3x3 three three to 4x1, so we make a really <coughs> flat layer right now. One of the next steps will be changing the nozzle so that maybe we can even ch change the, the size while printing. The, the main goal will not be finding one particular design, mm -hmm. really showing the, the, the design space that printing allows and then um, the next step is for, for, the, for the build environment, for the market. People keep asking the question that why concrete printing and why not the conventional method, which is the basic question people get, people ask, right? But it's just a method of uh, construction, like the production method of production that we need to evolve, right? That's a part of that is, of course, limiting the material use, which is something that is certainly a lot easier to do by printing. But it's much more an adding value to what you're actually making. It's, it's the integration of different functions and materials, which is pretty hard to do with traditional construction methods. The, the funny thing is that um, the separated techniques and materials are already there. There's already self-cleaning concrete and translucent yeah. concrete and high-performance concrete. But it's so hard to place them at the right position because if you cast them in a formwork, then you have super expensive self-cleaning concrete in the middle of your cross-section, which doesn't, which doesn't do anything. Yeah. So this printer, it, it just moves at every position and it can choose at every location which type of concrete it positions there. We could do a very extensive research and know everything about concrete printing and then in four years from now we'll step outside of this university and we'll share it with the world and there's no demand for it. And to prevent that from happening, we, we wanted to, to ask from, from the beginning on, ask the, these, these professionals, ask the building industry, Let's say that we do fully understand this, which will happen in, in some years from now. What would you like to do with it? And that's the reason why we made this design challenge. We have the, uh, it's called economy of nature, which is a staircase, uh, which is a, a double, double curved staircase uh, with a very nice pattern on the railings of this, uh, of this staircase. And uh, what we learned from this is printing on top of something else so that we could create a curved shape simply by first printing something that is flat but curved in a flat plane, mm -hmm. then we lift this and we can print anything on top of that. Now I don't think that this type of concrete is a material that we'll be using as a formwork forever, yeah. but it's just to show the proof of concept that mm -hmm. we could, with a very cheap recyclable material, could do the same thing and that's yeah. very nice. With the firewall we have certain limitations right now. The brief was to, to us that we need to, to make a translucent wall, but the geometry, the micro geometry wasn't, wasn't really mentioned to us. We could use whatever geometry we want. 
So we're trying to incorporate those ideas like with a con continuous process, with a continu continuous, uh, let's say, printing process, how can we make it more translucent? And that's an idea to, uh, in a way, to explore as well, because you can either come up with complex tool parts, like uh, curved tool parts, which is a very difficult or tedious process, or a simpler method would be you just let the concrete flow from a little higher, uh, position. higher, higher, higher. position, the concrete itself curls up and then gives you the same geometries in a way. So the third one is the is the ASO office, which is an example of, of really reducing material in a design um, based on, for example, stress patterns. Uh, the nice thing about uh, these kinds of optimizations and printing is that they are suddenly a lot easier to make compared to traditional means because making formworks for these uh, these types of structures is pre pretty complex. What we learned from this is that um, very, very straightforward things like how much can these layers cantilever, which is which is a very interesting thing if you want to go into more complex 3D geometries. Mm -hmm. um, and also what is very interesting in this, this column in particular is that it shows an example of integration of functions in a cross-section. 